And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Lagoon Land of Druids. And one of the things I want to start out by saying about this game is that this game is going to easily be one of my nominations for Best Artwork of the Year, by far. The artwork in this game is just absolutely stunning. And the components, there's tiles in the game that are very thick. I mean, it's just a really good looking game when you put it on here. And it's about a, a theme that's not used that often. It's druids. Lagoon is the first world. And these druids are moving around using Elamine, Valaline, and Dionine energies, and you're trying to unify Lagoon and try to have this one force that overarches. Actually, that's really about all the theme I understood, but you have druids moving around and such. Let's see how the game plays. <laughs> At the beginning of the game, you're going to put three tiles out. Now, what three tiles you put out is up to you. There's three different starting setups that the rule book recommends. And, you know, there's other scenarios. I, I think you're probably supposed to pick one of the starting setups in there. The rest of the tiles are placed in the bag. Now, every tile in the game is two-sided. So there's two different tiles on each of the sides. And as you can see, the artwork for this game is really nothing short of phenomenal. Now... What you're going to do is you have five of these druids. One of them is your elder druid. It's a bigger one than the rest. And you'll start with two on one of the, the haven that the game begins with. Um, let's just quick take a look at this. There's three different colors in this game, different seed colors, and they stand for different things, um, which doesn't matter at all. But you have uh, yellow, blue, and red. Okay, And so each tile matches that. Here's a yellow, a blue, and a red. You're going to start with one of each. Um, as the game progresses. But this tile is also a haven. It has a green background, has a haven symbol here that you can see. And havens are where uh, your druids are going to start as the game progresses. Now on your turn, you're going to get actions. The first thing you'll do is any of your druids that have been um, used, exhausted, you'll, you can refresh up to three of them. Now you will hopefully eventually get five on the board, but you're only gonna be able to refresh three of them each turn. And then you can take actions. Like for example, I can move from one space to another. When you take an action with these druids, they're often used. Many times, the, there will be an action on the tile itself, like here, and that, that little star symbol means the elder one. This says, move the invoking eldred to any site. So I, all I need to use a special ability of a tile is to have someone on it. Even though this one needs to use the elder, I would, I, since I have a guy on it, it connects with my elder and I can then move him to any site and then uh, exhaust them. Now you're going to want to make it bigger, so one of the actions you can take on your turn is to explore. To go to an adjacent area, you'll draw a tile from the bag and then you decide which side. So I want the Diodem Arch or Neem's Mirror. So let's say I put Neem's Mirror out here and go to that spot. So I've explored. Anytime you explore, you will you have this tile here in front of you, which basically lets me take the basic explore action, and I'll get a seed, one of these seeds, that matches the color of the tile that I placed out there. Now, once you do that, you're gonna flip it to the other side, which now has the big bullet word, not. I can no longer do the basic explore action, although other tiles may allow me to explore. So as the game progresses, you're going to have different tiles show up and hopefully some more havens where you'll be able to bring things on because that's another thing you can do as an action is you can bring druids onto the board, but when you bring a druid onto the board, they have to come in at a haven and they have to come in exhausted like that. Now, one of the major things that you're trying to do in this game, let's talk about scoring. At the end of the game, you're going to look and see what color tile there's the most of. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six reds. We have three yellows and we have two blues. So red wins by a mile. 
at the end of the game then, each red that you have, each red seed is worth one point and all the other seeds are worth nothing. Also, each yellow and blue tile that you have is going to be worth two points. Now, how do you get a tile? Well, you, the, the, the rule book talks about unraveling. Although, in his essence, I think you're just blowing stuff up. But, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other. To unravel a tile, you need to have three energy to destroy that tile. So, a yellow tile is destroyed by blue. So, let's say I wanted to destroy this yellow tile. I would need to have three guys on blue. Well, there only is two blue tiles on the board but I could also pay a blue seed. When that happens, I unravel this, it's gone. The person who did the unraveling is returned to me. Um, this tile is now mine to keep, and anyone who was on there gets sent back exhausted to one of the havens. Now, you can't unravel the last haven, so if there's only one haven left, you can't unravel it, and you also can't unravel a tile that would cause a split between all the rest of the tiles. So this is how the game progresses. It's going to continue until all the tiles have been pulled from the bag and you can put different numbers of tiles depending on what kind of game you want to play. And at that point you'll score like I told you already. Now there's all sorts of different actions and that's really the, the whole crux of the game is being able to do things. Here I can exhaust one of my people to discard a seed and then I can refresh up to two druids on sites of that seed's energy. Here I can move the Invoking Druid to any occupied site. And by the way, you can use a site as long as you're on it, so can anyone else. It's all about free sharing and stuff. Here you move the Invoking Druid to any site that does not occupy, as long as that site is adjacent to one you do occupy. So there's all sorts of things. Many of them help you unravel. Some of them give you extra uh, explore actions, but most of them have something to do with summoning Druids or... Uh, the moving them around the board. Once again, I will reiterate, and I think you saw when I just showed you how the game works, how beautiful it is and just how cool everything looks. I think it's a safe bet to say that the theme has absolutely nothing to do with the game. In fact, the theme is not existent. In fact, I would argue that the theme is detrimental to the game because I constantly, it's one of those themes where it's like, what does that do? I'm unraveling, uh, uh, I'm doing this, I'm invoking. There's all this weird terminology, which is simply is turn a tile over, move this, get rid of this. All right, but the gameplay itself, well, I hate it. <laughs> and I feel bad about saying that because hate is probably a light word for how I felt about the game. I hated it. Now I am, uh, let me draw a very clear parallel here, uh, or a clear distinction here. I am not saying this is a bad game. In fact, I think there's a lot of folks out there who will like it, and it's probably, for those folks, very well designed. But wow, did this game invoke feelings of rage in me. So let me explain why I hated it. It's not because of the beautiful artwork, I like that. The theme is weird and doesn't match, so that's, that's, that's a negative. But the reason I hated it was because, uh, first of all, what happens not on my turn completely is boring. I cannot make any kind of futuristic plans. I just sit there and wait quietly until my turn because I might be planning to use that tile and then mix that tile and there's like combinations of tiles that you can use and then you blow a couple of them up before my turn comes again. Woohoo! Now in a four player game, we're teams, so two against two, so you can talk to your partner, but still, for the most part, there's still two turns where they're just blowing stuff up and adding tiles and moving things and that so you might as well not even try to think about your turn until it's your turn tonight. And that's not a big, I'm not a big fan of games that do that where the board changes so much. But the other thing is it's just boring. I mean, absolutely, completely, mind-numbingly boring. Ooh, I can move a guy anywhere on the board. I can move him over here. I can do this. I can flip this. There's nothing really interesting. I mean, ooh, blowing up tiles? Well, that's interesting. How can I do that? Well, you can do that and it's, it's, it's a difficult process, but you can pull it off and that's how you score points. And it's just, the rest of it is move here, move here, move here. I thought, oh wow, oh what can the tiles be? Let's, let's, let's take a look at one. Discard a seed, move one of your druids, any site of that seed's energy. Okay, so I can move a druid somewhere. What's on the other side? Exile a druid, move an unlock site to any space. So I can move a site to some other spot. When exploring a site, you can discard a seed, refresh a druid. Okay, once per turn, and it help you unravel this, you can you gain an additional energy from this site. Okay, well that's interesting, but that's the one interesting out of three. Okay, 
Another thing I didn't like was just the fact that after a certain point in the game, you realize red is winning, or yellow is winning, or blue is winning, and there's nothing much you can do about that if you decided to invest all your energy in one of the other colors. Too bad, you just lost, and you gotta wait till the game is over. All right, so once again, not saying it's a bad game. I really think there's some people who will like this very abstracted type of game. I, however, am not one of them. I like abstract games, but this one had a theme plastered on it, which doesn't make any sense, and it just, to me, was incredibly boring. Now, there is a two-player game, so I tried that out to see how well that worked, and that was a little more interesting because the board doesn't get blown up on before my turn comes again. And there is a solo player game, which, well, I'm a, I don't play solo games, so you might want to try that out, too. But... Man, I feel like such a waste of artwork, such a waste of coolness. And it, but obviously I'm completely wrong here because they're, the game raised 100,000 on Kickstarter. The game has lots of people loving all over it. In fact, other than me and the groups I played it with, it seems like everyone else loves it, but we hated it. Okay, but you still might like it. Check it out, who knows? I'm not ever playing it again. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boo. <laughs> Boo.